uh, this photo is famous, two, two uh, mates with the sticks trying to raise the dress for the skirt over the, the lady's head so that she could uh, just uh, raise her arms and uh, have the skirt put over the petticoat and uh, the greenery. <laughs> and here she is ready to uh, go out into the world. And look at the size. Well, Phyllis had a quite a big petticoat, a big dress, but look at the size of this one. It's about twice as big as the one that Phyllis was wearing, or is wearing. Sorry. Here is another card, this time by the Goddard Brothers, showing the uh, maid dressing the mistress again, and you can see the petticoats, crinoline. Here is another one, which is much, much lighter. Very nice, uh, very nice petticoat. I've never seen uh, any, any like this before, so it's only uh, in this photo I've seen one. And again, the, the maid putting the dress with a skirt over the head of the mistress. And now the lady is ready to go out with her husband. The maid is uh, making sure the folds are neat behind. And she's ready to go out. And he's giving her his arm and finding probably difficult. So, so difficult sometimes that he had to use a scarf. And uh, this, this photo is not actually after a cartoon by uh, Honoré Daumier. And uh, here is the cartoon. He said, uh, the, the, the caption reads, if, uh, we, if the dresses of our women continue to, to expand, we would need a rubber men to accompany them in the streets. <laughs> so hence the scarf to, uh, to make it easier. So this is what it must have looked like in the streets of uh, Paris or London or even New York in the 1860s when a man and a lady met. So the costume of the man was very tight, as you can see, with a stove pipe and uh, tight trousers and a uh, tail coat, and the lady with a, quite a, an expansion of dress. And the photo is interesting here because they are, they are standing outside a shop selling petticoats, filling petticoats. <coughs> now this, uh, this picture is called Paradise and uh, it, it shows that for some people crinoline was wonderful, was uh, extraordinary, made women beautiful, they compared women to flowers and for some crinoline was uh, a pain in the neck, really, and uh, it was uh, a disaster. And this is uh, another photo showing the painted Amelius cutting the crinoline of his daughter because crinoline used a lot of fabric and uh, it was very expensive and it uh, ruined families. Lots of people got ruined because they had to buy more and more dresses for their wives and daughters and it was so expensive they got into uh, financial trouble. So this is, this is called uh, the last of the crinoline that the father is cutting the fabric with the scissors. For one, a lot of people, crinoline was the invention of the devil. And here you can see the, the burial of crinoline because crinoline appeared in 1856 and people were so outraged that they were not going to last. So by the end of 1856, they were already predict predicting that crinoline would not last and would disappear. This ceremony was in 1860 and it's you can read on the, on the tombstone. Here lies Crinoline, uh, also called a cheetah, and uh, deceased in 1860. Well, this, this was very optimistic because although Crinoline was very cumbersome and caused many accidents, as we will see, it uh, lasted for over 15 years, which is quite long for a fashion. So this was very optimistic, and every year uh, the press announced the end of Crinoline. And it, it, it didn't happen until 15 years ago. Labs. Um, so far we've seen uh, photos which were staged in studios, but this one is just uh, 
photo showing a young lady going to the photographers to have a picture taken, and this is a stereo. There are lots of cards to visit showing a young woman in crinoline, but this one is a stereo, and you can see she's wearing quite a, a big dress here as well. And here is another one of a more mature woman wearing a big crinoline. Women wore crinoline not only at home or to, to have their photos taken, but also outside. So you can see here um, two ladies visiting a, a small village in Devon, Clovelly. And uh, the two women are tourists, obviously. But if you look at the, in the background, you can see a servant carrying a bucket of water. And she too is wearing a crinoline because if the fashion started with the other upper class and the uh, middle well, class and upper class, it soon spread to uh, all classes, even to servants. And uh, you would find servants scrubbing, scrubbing the floor, or cleaning the grates, or carrying buckets of water in crinoline. And uh, you can also, I think, making um, there's one lady on the left as well. I'm not sure you can see her here on the family body. So this is a picture by Francis Deffo in the 1860s. Now this is a way of traveling, so this is India. So uh, Victorian ladies, when they went abroad, didn't, uh, didn't uh, forego the fashion they had in, in, uh, in Britain. And uh, you can see a lady in crinoline being carried by two, uh, two men here. It must have been very, very, very hot in India wearing a crinoline. And if you visit a glass here, well, why, why not wear a crinoline as well? It's uh, the most appropriate costume to, uh, to, to stand on a glass here. <laughs> yeah, right. Or to climb up a ladder on a glass here. <laughs> so, yeah, so nothing stopped women from wearing crinoline, even when they were out. But they were a bit shorter, you, you, you notice they were a bit shorter. When they, um, when they went hiking, but it was still creamy, and it was still petticoats and a dress. This is a photo by Michael Burr showing, showing uh, a photographer's studio and uh, two, well, two competing photographer's studio trying to, to attract the attention of a lady. And you can see, you can see uh, the sign above, her little likeness and a shape. And um, there is a sign saying that queenly ladies are taken outside because the, the studio was very small and uh, the lady was uh, very big. So they, they had a, they had a lot of fun with queenly photographers and, uh, and the cartoonists. Here is um, another photo of a servant maid cleaning, cleaning the door, and as you can see, her petticoat has got caught into, in, in the railings. And uh, crinoline was a very dangerous, a uh, very dangerous garment. Uh, it could uh, get caught here in the railings, but also in machinery. Um, in many factories wore crinoline, and there were lots of moving parts in, in factories, and uh, often they would get caught, and uh, they would be crushed. So their legs would be crushed, and they would um, very often die. So here is another example by Michael Burr of a lady getting stuck, trying to get through a, a very narrow, uh, well, two narrow posts. And you can see very nice, very nice place to go here as well. And of course, crinoline was very inflammable. Um, it was a lot of air underneath. That's the, that, that was the idea to make to make the dress lighter. There were fewer petticoats, so there was a lot of air. And uh, women um, wore such big skirts that when they walked past the fire, past the fireplace, often uh, the dress would um, catch fire, and it was very difficult to uh, to uh, extinguish the fire because they would uh, burst the flames very quickly. And unless they were rolled up into a carpet very, very quickly, they would, they would be burnt and uh, lots of them died. It was estimated that 300 women a year died uh, by fire 
were in cleaning. And it was one of the most uh, dangerous, dangerous fashion ever. But here is an engraving which was uh, converted into 3D again, showing the dangers of cleaning. And the danger was that when the woman caught fire, usually there was another woman trying to help her. And this other woman would catch fire too, and she would die as well. So it was very dangerous to help women uh, on fire when they were wearing cleaning. Now this is a photo showing uh, clearly women in church, in church, and you can see how close they are together, how their, their skirts are touching. And this this is the only photo I found to uh, to illustrate what happened in 1863 in Santiago de Chile. Uh, there was a festival there, and uh, there were 2,500 people in the church, and all the ladies were wearing clothing. Most of the congregation was actually ladies, and a candle fell on one criminal, and the whole the whole congregation went in flames, and over two thousand people died on that day in one spot, and uh, the disaster was only heard about in England and France uh, at the beginning of uh, the next year in 1864, but. Um, it was uh, reported in the press and people, journalists tried to say, why don't you stop that crazy fashion, that incredible fashion? And somebody in uh, Victoria actually wrote to the, to the ladies of, of uh, Great Britain telling them to stop, to, to, uh, to try and uh, be more sensible and to stop that ridiculous fashion. But fashion is more powerful than kings and queens and uh, women continue to <coughs> This is Emperor Napoleon III. He was he also tried in France to um, ridicule women who were wearing cream beans, but he told his his wife, the Empress Vision, loved the cream bean. She was even accused of having invented the cream bean to hide the pregnancy at the time, which is uh, another myth because the um, when she was pregnant uh, in 1855, the prince was born in March 1856, and uh, the queen in the still queen was uh, patented in April 1856 after the birth of the prince. But she was still accused of uh, having invented and promoted queen. Hmm. Here is another photo of the empress wearing a very nice queen. And another one with a new place. So this, these photos were from uh, 1859. So Clinton was still going very strong then. <coughs> Clinton had one, one upside, he could save lives. Uh, a lot of women who were trying to commit suicide, jumping off the bridge, uh, realized that the Clinton acted as a parachute and then as a floating device. But what, what the picture what the doesn't show here is that usually uh, they were upside down. Oh. And so it was a bit, a bit less dignified that, uh, than shown, shown in the photo. But there are lots and lots of stories in the press uh, uh, about ladies that were saved from drowning by their criminal. So that was the only upside. Uh, it was very difficult to do anything in Crimean. Uh, imagine getting into an omnibus, but the doors were not very wide, so this lady here is trying to squeeze into the omnibus. And Crimean was also accused of being a bit too revealing. Look at the, the, the legs of the lady. So that this, was not, this was not very dignified for a lady to assure her legs. So it came to a point when Punch, the, the satirical magazine, decided that women had to leave their crinoline outside before they got into the omnibus. So this is a cartoon here, new omnibus regulation, please, please, leave your crinoline outside. And uh, the, this cartoon um, was um, immediately illustrated by photographers, still photographers. So this is uh, one by, um, this is a photo by uh, 
Sylvester, Fred Sylvester, and the caption is exactly the same as the in the Birch cartoon. And there is one which was taken uh, in uh, outside in the street of London. There are several examples, and it's funny because in the first photo, as you can see, there are only one or two uh, lookers on, and uh, as the since the photographers made about uh, a dozen or more photos, you can see the crowd growing and growing in the background, and all the petticoats hanging from the from the omnibus. Everybody wanted to have women, and uh, we saw that servants tried to imitate their mistresses, and even girls uh, wanted to have women. So when they couldn't, offer, uh, they couldn't uh, purchase one, when they couldn't afford one, they made one with uh, anything. Uh, here they are using um, the hoops from a from a barrel to make a makeshift women. This is another photograph, a photograph by Michael Burke, or he called that. Uh, making a uh, This is a mother and her son. So boys also wore crinoline in, uh, in the 1860s. Boys and girls were dressed the same way until the age of six or seven, seven usually, when the boys were breached. They, were, they, they wore trousers for the first time and it was a very important time in their lives because until that age they were, they were brought up by women. And then after the age of seven, when they were breached, they would be uh, brought by men. So the, <coughs> you can see that the, the, they have a matching, a matching dress, the boy and uh, his mother. A crinoline was very useful to hide a lover, because <laughs> people have to hide a lover behind, or sometimes even underneath. And uh, there are lots of caricatures and photos as well of uh, uh, lovers hiding behind, uh, behind the ladies. So this one is called, uh, it's only Moustache. Moustache is the, the name of the dog. The mother has heard noise and, and the lady is pretending that it's only the dog. Here is another example of the man behind the lady's dress. Now, quickly, it had many uses. So it was used uh, by children as tents. You can see the door of the tent, and you can see the legs of a little girl crawling under the tent. It could be used as uh, well, to keep rabbits. <laughs> And it was used for uh, smuggling. So uh, this is not a stereo. This is uh, this is a magic lantern slide. But uh, I've, I've never found a stereo actually uh, about smuggling. But um, it was very very common for women to smuggle goods under the crinoline. And here is another part of the slide. So. I'm going to, 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 to read a list of a few things that were found under women's crinoline, and these, these appeared in the press. So, obscene pictures. So, um, yeah, naughty pictures were carried under crinolines and delivered from the photographer to the, to the brothels, for example. Uh, once they found a turkey, 12 partridges, a hare and three rabbits. 32 pounds of tobacco, 22 pounds of cigars, counterfeit money, 4 bottles of brandy, 8 flasks of eau de cologne, silks, neckerchiefs, other articles of dress, 170 pairs of stockings, 14 kilograms of 30 pounds of gunpowder. <laughs> And during the Civil War, weapons. An officer once said, uh, when we look at women, uh, we are not looking for uh, legs, we are looking for arms. <laughs> there were also forbidden books and newspapers uh, introduced uh, under privileges uh, in France. There was censorship in France in the, the reign of Napoleon III. And uh, authors like Victor Hugo, for example, they were uh, banned. They were forbidden, their books were forbidden, and so the, 
uh, Victor Hugo, um, Hugo, Hugo's novels and uh, pamphlets were uh, smuggled into France and the Crimeans. So they did, uh, it was very, very uh, useful to smuggle goods into, uh, from one place to another. Very much. Uh, crinoline also had, um, well, was dangerous in case of winds. A uh, wind would be blown from uh, the pavement onto the road, and uh, some of them were uh, run over by omnibuses or uh, carts or horses. Uh, women walking along cliffs as well sometimes would, uh, would be blown off the cliff and uh, die, uh, and um, be crushed onto the rocks and, and die, of course. Uh, but the wind sometimes had also a revealing uh, effect and uh, showed women's ankles. Now in those days, in the 1850s and 60s, the most erotic part of a woman's body was uh, her ankles. And uh, the crinoline was very good for that because for years men have never been able to see uh, ladies' legs or ankles because of all the petticoats she was wearing. But with the crinoline this changed because of the swinging movement of the crinoline, which could expose uh, the ankles, and sometimes when they went, uh, when they climbed upstairs or climbed downstairs, they had to lift the dress a little. So there was this uh, erotic potential of crinoline here. When it was raining uh, as well, they would uh, have to lift their skirts. So again, the men would be able to. Um, to see their ankles. And you can see here how um, much that uh, was used by photographers. This was considered a very risque photo at the time. Now it just makes a smile, but at the time it was very risque. This would have been kept under lock and key. This one, the, the, the woman is actually hiding the face well, behind, behind the fan because uh, uh, models, at the time this is the French card, models that were posing for risque or very naughty cards could go to prison, so the, the, the lady here uh, chose to hide her face, which is a very wise precaution. Again, you can, you can look at the, 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 the petticoat, the lace petticoat she's wearing underneath, it's amazingly beautiful. So this one is a bit, uh, well, notier again, the, the neighbor uh, looking at the lady dressing or undressing. And I like this one, it's called Beware Young Man. It's a bit later than the other ones, uh, but it shows all the, the things women use to, uh, to, well, to, be, to look more beautiful, to look more alluring. Uh, it's, it's quite funny actually because you've got a set of false teeth, you've got some uh, false <laughs> hair, you've got basalt, you've got crinoline of course here. Everything women wear or use to, uh, to look more attractive. Nothing has changed. <laughs> <laughs> So we were fortunate when we wrote the book to actually find an uh, eBay uh, vintage group. So this film is 1864, uh, and um, it was made for a grown-up woman. But uh, when I tried to, uh, to photograph it with a model, the only person that could fit inside the crinoline was a nine-year-old girl. So this young girl is only nine-year-old. Uh, her sister was 11, and she was already too big for the crinoline, uh, especially the, the bodies. Um, women wore corsets, they had very, very narrow um, waists, and uh, it was impossible to find anybody that could fit that crinoline. But it was still uh, in very good condition, well, from a distance. When you look at it close, it's not so good, but from a distance it looked very nice. So this is what a young girl would have looked like in Crimean. And <laughs> now we search, we looked everywhere, we really looked everywhere, but I and I. And uh, you'll find this photo on the, on the back of the, of the book, one, not this one, but a very similar one. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good part of the, 